Okay, continuing with the friction star welding, today we will look into the uh, little bit of FSW metallurgy, basic metallurgy of the friction star welded joints. Uh, as we know in fusion welding, uh, we have essentially two distinct zones that is one is the fusion zone or another just surrounding the fusion zone you have heat affected zone right. That is how the so called basic metallurgy in case of a friction, uh, fusion welding looks like that means because of the heat input melting takes place. So, we have a, a typical microstructure there which is uh, uh, microstructure of the fusion zone and just surrounding it where recrystallization takes place which does not go into the uh, so called molten phase. There we have some recrystallization and that is called heat affected zone. Here in this case we have typically three zones the central one just below the uh, tool which we have seen the below the probe that is referred to as the weld nugget, weld nugget that means uh, the zone where both the plates were, uh, uh, were placed one after the another along the butt line, just along the butt line the metal there as if has got uh, as if it has got fused and formed the weld nugget, right. So, that portion you have a typical uh, microstructural, uh, I mean the microstructure is somewhat different than the rest of the metal. And surrounding that we have a zone which is referred to as TMAZ, that is thermomechanically affected zone, TMAZ, thermomechanically affected zone. Surrounding that you have heat affected zone. That means here what we see in case of fission welding, if we go back to fission welding once again, just for the sake of analogy, what we see once the welding is done, the weld profile would look like this. This zone, this particular zone, zone is the fusion zone. Fusion zone means here the entire material was in a molten state, was in a molten state. So, from the molten phase it has gone to the solid phase. So, it will develop certain kind of microstructural pattern, right. And beyond that a part of the material undergone a certain temperature cycle, a certain temperature cycle. That means, I am heat is being put into the system and it will get conducted right Depend, depending on this there will be temperature rise and if we monitor the temperature and find out the line where it attained 1000 degree centigrade that becomes the boundary of the zone where recrystallization is observed right so, this zone is referred to as heat affected zone. All these we are talking about in case of fusion welding. Why 1000 degree centigrade? Essentially, for steel recrystallization takes place when it is subjected to a temperature greater than 723 degree centigrade more than 723 degrees. So, truly we should look into the isotherm of 723, but in any case just, just, just for the sake of I mean simplifying the thing, it is said that the zone between 1500 degree centigrade and 1000 degree centigrade, what is this? That means, this part of the, this, this part of the plate was subjected to a temperature level in between that zone 1500 to 1000. Why 1500? That is the melting temperature, right. 
So, that is how we see that in case of fusion welding, we have two distinct zones. One is that of heat affected zone, another is fusion zone. What happens in the heat affected zone? Essentially, we see that depending on the cooling rate, the sizes, the grain sizes, either they become bigger or they become smaller, right. Grain sizes means when we see the uh, under a powerful microscope, the still it it uh, it looks like some some of the crystals they are placed one after the another the sizes of those crystals are referred to as grain sizes right so that is what is in the case of fusion welding whereas in case of uh, in case of friction star welding we have little different little different means here you will not have such a nice uh, uh, this this kind of fusion zone, right? Instead, you'll you'll have a area which will be the well nugget, then some zone which is the TMAZ, and then the fusion, so-called heat affected zone. These are not here. You have the heat affected zone this is the TMAZ and this part is the so called weld nugget. Now, not always this weld nugget and the TMAZ would be very clearly visible, very clearly visible. In fact, there uh, I mean in this section it is not, not very clearly visible as such. However, you can uh, anyway this this picture is not that clear so that that also indicates that that also shows that in case of a, a fusion welding if we take a section and do the uh, proper etching chemical etching and look in into the microstructure uh, i mean the microstructures can be seen and also in the naked eye these distinct boundaries are very clearly visible distinct boundaries are uh, visible of course, this is a uh, picture for a um, plate, aluminum alloy plate, which has been friction star welded. So, what happens here uh, in the weld nugget that there will be uh, the grain structure, the variation in the grain structure of the weld nugget, TMAZ and HZ are observed or not much uh, observed in naked eyes only when you go for uh, under powerful uh, optical microscope then only one can see how the grain structure has formed. Like for example, this is the grain structure in case of a well nugget wherein you can take rough measurement of this, these are the grains you can measure them. So, they are varying from 2.8 to roughly 3.4 micrometers. Similarly, if we look into the grain structure in the heat affected zone, there we see the uh, grain uh, sizes varied from 3.9 to 5.4 micron. That means, grain coarsening has taken place, grain sizes have become bigger. So, what you see in, in case of, uh, in, in, in case of uh, friction star welding, that the grain sizes they increase they increase from the well nugget as we move towards the heat affected zone. In the well nugget, the grain sizes are even smaller, finer. So, what we get from that? Once the grain sizes are finer means we get a superior mechanical property. We get a superior mechanical property. So, anyway, that is what, what we see that the well nugget, this nugget is the center of the weld center of the weld which is commonly referred to as weld nugget and it consists of very fine grained structure less than 4 microns right weld nugget consists of very fine grained structure and that forms through dynamic recrystallization during the stirring process because of the recrystal that means 4 microns it in fact it, it is even less than the parent metal grain size 
in the that means the original metal grain size whatever was there it is even less than that that happens because of the dynamic recrystallization during the stirring process. Here the changes in the grain is taking place in case of fusion zone whatever changes in grain size took place whether it become finer or coarser or any other grain structure that got formed that was because of the thermal cycle because the entire material here underwent a certain thermal cycle. Whereas, in case of friction star welding, it is not only thermal cycle, it is a thermomechanical cycle. That is why you have that thermomechanically affected zone, because that extreme starring effect what is taking place, that starring effect is nothing but extreme mechanical deformation, right? Extreme mechanical deformation, like for example, you have a steel plate, if you cold roll it, its grain structure changes, its property changes. Like the steel, if you subject it to some tensile load and leave it, again if you test it, you will find its strength has increased, which is known as strain hardening, right? Strain hardening or work hardening. What happens actually? The microstructure changes because of that mechanical work, because of that plastic work, because of that work which has been put into beyond elastic limit. Same thing happening here, here also it is extreme plastic deformation takes place in case of friction star welding, the entire metal is being stirred. So, that is why it says that the and the effect is the grain refinement takes place because of the dynamic recrystallization during the stirring process. Right. Now, how much would be the width, this width of the weld nugget, how much would be the width of this weld nugget that will depend on, depend on the tool design, depend on the welding parameters, depend on the alloy compositions, right. On this various aspects, it will depend what is the uh, width of the nugget, weld nugget. The mechanical properties of the joint in as welded condition provides for strength higher than that of parent metal. This is, uh, this is important and quite interesting. Why? Because when welding has been done, one may think that the welded joint is the weaker point. It is not so. In fact, uh, along the welded joint, it shows it exhibits a higher strength, a strength higher than the parent metal. Right, higher than the parameter. Why that is happening? Because of your grain refinement. I mean, without going much detail into the metallurgical aspect, certain simple uh, uh, simple rules are like this. That means, if the grain is refined, means the grain sizes become smaller, you have higher strength. If the grain sizes are bigger, you have lesser strength. Right little bit if we see, suppose these are two samples. Now, say these are my grains as we can see in the, in a powerful optical microscope, right. In another sample, the grains we are seeing are say something like this. So, this is what a fine grain structure, a coarse grain structure, right. So, what happens when it becomes a fine grain structure, it exhibits higher strength, higher strength against what? Against say tensile failure. What is a tensile failure? It is nothing but a rupture proceeding through the grains. A tensile failure means what? That means the say a piece of bar, if you subject it to ten, ten, tensile load, say it breaks after some time. Breaking means what? That means it is getting some crack is developing and it is progressing along the along the width or whatever. Right? Now, what happens when you have bigger grains, then the grain boundaries also are bigger. Right? 
So, generally a dislocation I mean where the failure will get initiated where it is the weakest point right from the weakest point the failure will get initiated. Now, from the weakest sum say this is my weakest point in the plate. So, here the failure gets initiated and then how it will propagate? It will propagate through places of least resistance. What are the places of least, least resistance? Well, one is the boundary, grain boundary. It is easier to break through the grain boundaries, right? And here you have bigger grains, so have wider grain boundary, right? So, it becomes easier to break through the bigger grain boundaries than a smaller grain boundary. Because in smaller grain boundary, what will happen? It will progress, then it will hit the grain. It will have to take a detour as if again hit a grain again. So, it will have a much more a longer path as if. This is the simplest explanation why a fine grain structure gives you higher strength than a coarse grain structure. Right? A fine grain structure has a exhibits a higher strength. So, or in other words, any process which leads to a fine grain structure is good for the material. Why? Because that will that the same material with same chemical composition will give you additional strength. Same thing is happening here uh, as we can see because of the recrystallization taking place that means originally the crystals were bigger. Because of the friction star welding it has become even finer. How? Recrystallization has taken place. The crystals got recrystallized because of this mechanical action, primarily mechanical action because the heat involved was not much, right. So, thereby we see the mechanical properties of the joint uh, provides for strength higher than that of the parent metal. So, that shows that if friction star welding is done, then it will satisfy your all strength requirement. Obviously, this 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 will hold good. That means the joint will uh, provide for strength higher than parent metal, provided there are no flaw in it, no defect in it. Okay. So due to grain refinement that takes place in the well nugget, we get the strength higher than the parent metal. So this is uh, here, of course, is the, is the aluminium. It's not very clearly visible. Anyway, so here we see the fine grain microstructure of the weld nugget. It has uh, gone as below as low as 2.5 microns. Then the thermomechanical is just adjacent to the your weld nugget. You have the thermomechanical affected zone. Why thermomechanical affected? It is being termed as because it is subjected to a certain temperature rise because of the friction some heat was generated over this you had that uh, what you call the shoulder the shoulder was rubbing against the plate so in the periphery of the shoulder because of friction additional heat was generated so this plate around the well nugget the nugget is forming below the probe below the nib of the tool friction star tool right there the well nugget formed and around that you have the thermomechanically affected zone that was uh, uh, some temperature rise was there as well as it got mechanical deformations, mechanical deformation because of the stirring action which has taken place in the well nugget. So, this is the re region surrounding, surrounding the nugget zone. It leads to a region, region of partially recrystallized grains. Here the recrystallization is partial which many of the uh, uh, partially recrystallized grains in, in which many of the fibrous grains normally aligned in the rolling direction are rotated. That means, you will see it is not very clearly visible here. Here one can see that uh, uh, I mean uh, that the grains have got as if twisted. The grains have got twisted, the metal have got twisted that becomes somewhat visible in, in, in a better micrograph. So, here because of this 
this can be because of this fib fibrous grains which gets uh, aligned in the uh, rolling direction which are getting rotated. This can be dangerous as the newly aligned high angle grain boundaries can become susceptible to stress corrosion cracking. It says some other aspect is coming into the picture because as you know al here we are primarily talking about aluminum alloy all this metallurgical aspect what I have talked about are of, of that of aluminum alloy high magnesium aluminum alloy they are the marine grade alloy right that is it is uh, referred to as 5083 aluminum alloy. this is a this is of marine grade by marine grade we mean they are used in marine environment right this 5000 series alloy they are they have a high magnesium percentage high magnesium content of the order of four and a half percent magnesium which provides for the corrosion resistance in marine environment this particular aluminum alloy so because of this, uh, the partial recrystallization of the grains and that too they are getting uh, mechanically deformed that leads to a situation that leads to a situation wherein which may cause uh, may make the material susceptible to stress corrosion cracking. Stress corrosion cracking means it will make the material susceptible to corrosion and under stress the cracks will form right. So, that is how we can see that a thermomechanical affected zone or the TMAZ zone becomes the weaker zone. Like in fusion welding the heat affected zone is the weaker zone because there you have the grain coarsening taking place. The grain sizes increase in case of fusion welding in the heat affected zone. In case of uh, uh, well here and then we have the heat affected zone this is again surrounding the TMAZ as schematically we have shown here the surrounding the TMAZ this zone is the heat affected zone that is somewhat similar to that of as we saw in case of fission welding. Here the starting effect and the temperature attained at the heat affected zone leads to again grain refinement. Here leads to grain refinement means grain refinement from that of the pellet metal. Though we see here a, a particular given case uh, wherein we see that the grain sizes are varying uh, from 3.9 to 5.4 microns right whereas in well nugget it was even smaller much smaller than this. So, what you see that the grain sizes becomes small. I mean grain sizes become smallest in the well nugget and then they gradually increase as you go towards heat affected zone. But still within the heat affected zone also it remains in a refined condition, refined condition means lesser than that of the parent metal. Thereby overall aspect is that you, you have a, a, a I mean by doing friction star welding in aluminum alloy one can expect to have a superior joint that means joint without any flaw welding flaw as well as superior mechanical property because of the uh, because of the uh, thermomechanical action which is uh, the material is being subjected to the grain structure is forming the microstructure is forming such that which which is leading to a superior mechanical property right whereas in case of fusion welding of aluminum alloy one of the primary problem is uh, pri primary uh, primary so called difficulty is that uh, uh, formation of various welding defects formation of various welding defects because of fusion since fusion is taking place the chances of porosity they increase very much in case of aluminum welding that happens more because of the alumina layer present over it right. Whereas, in friction star welding since there is no melting taking place. So, all those difficulties due to fusion are not there at all right. And at the same time one uh, 
also there is no problem of deformations thermal deformations which which is uh, which is a severe uh, one can say difficulty in case of fission welding because of the high rate of heat input well now we will look into the defects and the detection because it being a different kind of uh, welding method we will look into its defects and the detection separately. So, defects uh, what we have seen that uh, generally the level of defects are less in case of friction star welding in comparison to uh, fission welding process. Here the defects resulting from the conventional fission welding methods are not expected that is the first thing in a solid state joining technique. As we are saying the first and foremost those conventional defects which we refer to as welding defects are not there. However, some defects can may occur if any of the process variables deviate from optimum right. So, what are the process variables? They are the tool rotation speed, weld travel speed, downward force and tool geometry these are the basic four process variables of which these are the fundamental three process variables for a given tool geometry right because tool geometry is not not a not a uh, kind of dependent variable for a given tool geometry these are the three basic process variables right so if any one of them goes wrong then some kind of defects may arise essentially the defect what arises is that uh, that is what is called uh, uh, I mean we will see some of the defects prime one of the primary defect is that uh, a kind of a continuous discontinuity may form within the welded joint continuous discontinuity that means the metal stunning assume a situation the metal stunning is not taking place uniformly. So, there is a place a void is remaining all through right that that is the one of the serious defects, but of course uh, that that will happen only and the reason is simple if any one of them is not is is not near optimum then such kind of defect may happen. Well otherwise the possible defects that may occur are the lack of penetration that lack of penetration what I was saying then the wormholes root toe defects improper joint strength improper joint strength means the proper mixing proper stirring and proper mixing of the material has not taken place. So, what we see that with increasing travel speed the rate of heat input decreases right. So, these are the type of uh, defects one, one can one can expect or one, one, one may observe in a faulty welding right. One, one of these defects may be observed in a faulty welding. So, as we said that this, this uh, whether defect will occur or not or what type of defect will take place will depend on uh, depend on, on these process variables deviation from this process variables right. So, we see what are the what happens when travel speed is increased travel speed means essentially traveling speed of the tool or in other words the welding speed the rate of obviously if that happens the rate of heat input will decrease if travel speed increases rate of heat input decreases rate of heat input decreases what will lead to reduces material softening in the vicinity of tool neem sufficient heat is not there it is something analogous to fission welding that means where if I move the torch very fast. So, what is happening metal was getting solidified very fast right and that led to different defects there and here what will happen the material softening will not take place because here the metal should attend a soft stage it should become soft enough such that it can be mixed properly because the metal is being stirred. So, that will not happen if the travel speed is more. So, making plastic flow more difficult. So, material flow will become difficult and that may uh, cause defects such as cavities right such as cavities even lack of 
penetration right and obviously improper joint strength all this will happen if you have too high a traveling speed and for low uh, tool uh, tool rotation speed there we are uh, talking about the uh, travel speed here is the tool rotation speed for low tool rotation speed and low downward force right and high travel speed what will happen it will give rise to all kinds of external defects low tool rotation speed means what heat generation will be less because heat generation as we have seen is directly proportional to the rpm if rpm is less heat generation will be less less downward force less downward force means it may not fully penetrate right as well as i mean uh, even if it fully penetrates less downward force means the frictional force along the shoulder will be less right so the additional heat which it was supplementing from the shoulder that will not take place that will not be available so there will be both this low rotation speed and low downward force will give you less amount of heat right A along with that you have high travel speed so here also your rate of heat input is decreasing so as it is less heat is being generated and that too is being moved away very fast so it will lead to all kinds of these defects and primarily the defects would be external the increase of the downward force moves defects to the interior of the weld again too much of downward force if it is applied then again it means this uh, uh, those warm holes and improper joint strength and lack of fission inside all those things may happen with increase in downward force and as well as uh, this i have not mentioned here along with increase in downward force there will be tendency of cutting of the plate from the surface because the shoulder will be rubbing too hard against the plate so it will try to cut through the plate that means on the edges along the shoulder the plate will get cut so that also is a, will be a kind of a defect because that will be a place for stress concentration that will be a place for if the structure is subjected to fatigue is uh, a, 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 a place for stress concentration leading to crack initiation right. So, what we see is that uh, in this friction star welding uh, this tool rotation speed and weld travel speed they are the two aspect which are very important tool rotation speed and travel travel speed so there is a, a so called uh, this uh, uh, tool rotation speed versus travel speed if the ratio is high it is said that it lead, leads to so called hot welds if the ratio is low that leads to cold welds ratio is high means high rotation speed but low travel speed high rotation speed with low travel speed means what too much of heat input both are giving with higher rotation more amount of heat is generated with slower travel speed more is the rate of heat input that means at a given instant more heat is going into the plate so that is referred to as will give rise to so called hot welds the reverse of that would be cold welds so hot welds and cold welds, what are they hot welds compared to cold welds in aluminum alloys less sensitive to defect formations that hot welds are less sensitive to defect formation right may exhibit more significant changes in microstructure and mechanical properties obviously when it is a hot weld means what essentially more heat is going into the system if more heat goes into the system straight away what we get 
the benefit is that metal becomes much softer because more heat is there metal becomes much softer and here we have a lower travel speed. So, for a longer time it remains softer. So, in that case it is expected that the defect formation will be less once the metal is the whole process of welding is based on the fact the metal is soft and I am stirring the metal. So, once the metal is softer then I can stir it better. So, chances of defect formation will be less. So, a hot weld condition is rather preferable a hot weld condition that means the ratio of tool rotation speed to the travel speed expected to be higher right. That is the uh, advantages part of it and other is it may exhibit more significant changes in microstructure and mechanical properties obviously, because the heat treatment it is undergoing will be different the the annealing effect will be more because for a longer time the heat is being retained the speed is slower. So, rate of heat input is more. So, residence time of the heat is more. So, cooling rate will be less. So, there will be a significant change in the microstructure can be observed and once there is a change in microstructure and also the mechanical effect is also there it is better stunning is taking place. So, the microstructure will get affected more significantly and if that happens that will have an effect on mechanical properties as well. So, too fast a welding speed or insufficient downward force can lead to formation of voids. Here we are seeing again the effect of the downward force. If, if the downward force is less and the speed of welding is faster then can lead to formation of voids. These are the voids we are talking about which may be a internal uh, defect also that is from both the top and bottom visually you will see it has been welded very nicely, but internally there will be a continuous void remaining between the in the joint. Why that happened? Because of less downward force and faster speed. then too short a knee depth or tool plants can cause joint line defects at the weld root that is also obvious because here what what we see is that as we said that the deep depth the height of the nib or the height of the probe which plunges inside the metal for doing the welding should be near equal to the thickness of the metal being welded. So, if that height becomes less that means, if I weld a plate whose thickness is more than the more than the that of the probe height the neve height of the FSW tool then you will have a, a, a defect at the weld root that means, there will be lack of fission in the root will take place a lack of fission will take place at the root. So, this is just a picture which shows a an experimental setup of, of, of a uh, friction star welding process. This is how it looks like the welding has been done here here you can see uh, that means, this particular width what what is visible here this is not the entire width of the well nugget no the well nugget would be somewhere at the center only this is the entire width of the shoulder diameter basically. So, the TMSZ the thermomechanical affected zone is expected to be having this kind of width because this much width has got directly affected by the pressure as well as the heat generated beyond that the whatever heat got generated and the whatever the metal got affected will be because of the heat flow taking place from the heat which got generated in this region. So, the heat affected zone will be beyond this boundary it is expected the heat affected zone will be beyond this boundary and that is only heat affected zone 
but here it will be thermomechanical affected zone because here the mechanical pressure downward force is also there as well as the frictional heat is also going in directly. So, th this is this is what so here you can see in the process what happens you achieve a welded plate which is having one flat surface there is no reinforcement bead or any such thing one smooth flat surface is achieved in 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 case of friction star welding so these are the tools so you can see the this this is your shoulder right solar diameter and you have a small tool here of course a tool of tra a trapezoid uh, i mean uh, a not trapezoid but pyram pyramid kind of uh, pyramidal a first term of a pyramid uh, has been made the uh, the tool geometry uh, which has been tested uh, and uh, this 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 weldings were done so that is how we see that uh, this friction star welding as you can see is a process which is suitable for primarily to start with suitable for material which is which has a lesser melting point which is softer right so as far as structural uh, material is concerned for uh, and that too with relevance to marine structure we have steel aluminum titanium composites right so there this uh, aluminum it fits in well for as far as friction star welding is concerned right so if friction star welding can be implemented then you you have the primary benefit primary benefit of your uh, because uh, when when you do f uh, fusion welding of aluminum the defects leading to uh, primary defects of porosity right porosity and crack formation those defects can be altogether avoided right well so that is what is the friction star welding and next we'll look into Well, here once again we are going back as we can see in the friction star we have talked about defects and the detection. We have already talked about this defects and detection as far as friction star welding is concerned. Now, how about the welding which has already been done say the fission welding processes which we have already discussed about because the whole process of welding is what I mean when do we say that the welding has been done properly when there is no defect in it defect in the structure or in other words the whole process of welding is nothing but a tool which translates the material to the final product a tool with whose help we can translate the material to the final product well there are many other tools are also involved in the process for example, a cutting tool, a bending tool, this is a joining tool, right. So, unless the joining is done properly, your final product also will not be proper, right. So, how to that means when you are using this tool, you should have a mechanism through which you should be able to ensure that the joining has been done properly. You should be able to ensure that the joining has been done properly because if it is not if it is not done properly that amounts to that in 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 course of usage of that product it might cause failure it might lead to a failure at that place where this joining has not been done properly right the failure in the, could be in the form of a i mean if it has not done properly means there can be a not improper joint by improper joint what we may mean that strength in that part will be strength bearing capacity might be less. So, during under the service load it may get overstressed and fracture may develop. So, there can be a breakage of the structure. Other type of uh, defects could be 
that the structure means suppose two plates are being welded and we expect a flat surface two flat plates are being welded. So, the final surface is also a bigger flat surface instead of that if I have geometrically different because of deformation taken place like the plates ought to be like this instead if I have like this that means a deformation angular deformation has taken place. So, that is also not a correct joint physically the two plates have been joined, but led to a product which is not accurate right there is a defect in it. So, in any case we will be talking about the defects which are only uh, visible or are there within the weld zone within the weld zone. So, we should have that means firstly we should know what are those weld defects right which are termed as defects or when a uh, when we will say that well there is a defect. So, that is one aspect to know about the defects other aspect is to know about that they are there that the defect is present. How do we know that? Because if the defect is present if it goes unnoticed if we cannot detect it then what will happen we will come to know about it much later in the stage, but in a very bad way means some sudden failure will take place which may lead to loss of property loss of life anything may happen right. So, definitely that is not expected. So, at the construction stage itself we should be able to assure ourselves that the structure which has been fabricated that is defect free right. So, that is done through what through some testing non destructive testing non destructive testing that means, whether they have been done properly or not one always can find out through means of destructive testing that means, two plates have been joined welded. So, cut out a sample subjected to tensile test impact test bending test and you can say well the joint is correct, but when you are actually doing a fabrication work you cannot cut out a sample. So, you will have to have a means of non destructive testing which is also referred to as NDT right. So, well let us first look into the type of defects what are the type of well defects. Now, this word defect because what happens the welding is such a process it is really very difficult to ensure that it, it can be a, a welded joint can be 100 percent defect free right. So, now if there is a defect I cannot accept that product it has to be rejected. So, another term is used which is referred to as flaw. So, instead of saying 100 percent defect free I mean well, so what we say that the when you do a welded joint it may remain some some flaw may creep in some flaw may occur in the process. Now, depending on the type of the flaw what type has crept in what type of flaw has taken place where it has taken place the location right what is the size of the flaw right through these three parameters will say whether this flaw qualifies to be a defect or not. right whether this flaw qualifies to be a defect or not. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to sort of find out a mechanism 
through which we'll try to classify the flaws such that if they fall in within the boundaries or within the limits of type location size then if they are within that then we say these are the defects now i have to make the structure defect free means those flaw are to be removed that means you have to either redo the structure or makes a, or implement some uh, corrective measure whatever something has to be done if they are beyond that that means they are uh, well or in other words i mean they are the, they are uh, they are within the permissible limits then you say they are not defects there are certain flaw in the mechanism with which are permissible means permissible means we accept them this comes from the logic of that you can never make anything 100% perfect you cannot do right so then which one i say that well if this much i say it is perfect and beyond that i say it's imperfect so to find out that definition or to find out that boundary beyond which i will say that well unacceptable within which acceptable so that will be uh, done through this uh, with the help of looking into what type that's why the differentiation between flaw and defect we are trying to make we'll try to look into the type of the flaw where it has taken place and what is the size of it so if they if they are uh, fall, uh, falling within a within within a boundary we say okay that is acceptable if it is beyond that more than that or whatever it's a defect right so okay little more in detail we'll see in the next class and once we know the defects then we will look for what are the mechanisms for finding them out that means the non-destructive testing methods okay